Now the clocks will be going back this weekend, which means we get an extra hour in bed. Lovely for all of us. Dr. Amir joins us this morning. Hi, Amir. Now you're going to tell us that's good for our health. We need more sleep. <laughs> Morning, Christine. Lovely to see you. Love the hair, by the way. Love the hair. Thank You're you. absolutely right. 1.6 billion people across 70 countries are going to gain an extra hour in bed. And whilst that's favourable to lose it, an hour in, as we do in the springtime, uh, it can upset something called our circadian rhythm. Now that's our internal body clock, which tells us when it's daytime, nighttime, when it's time to go to bed. It also helps with brain function and our general well-being. So anything that throws that off kilter can affect the way we feel. And that's why we feel a bit kind of poorly if we're jet lagged and move across time zones. Now, an extra hour in bed, as you say, is good for us. It's good for our brain function, our mood, our immune system. And when we sleep for longer, our blood pressure drops and it takes the pressure of our heart. So that is really good for our heart health. So all very good. But what people may struggle with come Sunday night is going to bed uh, what may feel like an hour early and find it difficult to get off to sleep, particularly if they've got work the next day, they need a good night's sleep. So what I would say to you is, you've got enough time between now and Sunday night, go to bed 15 minutes earlier each night. So when it does come to Sunday night, that hour doesn't feel like such a shock to you. Also, as always, don't use TV screens or, or tablets or phones in bed. That blue light will keep you awake. And daylight is really important for our circadian rhythm. That's sunlight. There isn't much around at the moment, but make the most of it where you can. Lunch times, weekends, go out in natural light. That will help reset that body clock for you. Okay. My younger days, it was just another hour to party, Amir. There was no going to bed an extra 15 minutes <laughs> in the lead up. That did We're not exist. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do like this, Amir, and I'm going to guess you like this because the NHS are using surfing and definitely dancing, I know you love that, to help us all tackle anxiety. Is this like a legitimate thing now? This is a legitimate thing, and it is based in serious mental health issues. You know, when young people in particular, age 11 to 18, are referred to mental health services, there's often a long wait. Certainly when I refer my patients to the Child and Family Health Service, they're often waiting the best part of a year to be seen, and they can get worse during that time. I see that a lot. So what is being trialled by University College London is those people on a waiting list, young people, just 600 of them as part of this trial, are going to be recruited into things that they enjoy doing. So it can be things like dancing, gardening, group activities like sports, even the arts. Um, hopefully they'll be better at dancing than me. Uh, <laughs> uh, what are the dancing tips? Head over to my Instagram, it's full, full of that. Uh, but the idea is, you know, those kind of activities help release things like serotonin and dopamine, which make them feel better. And group activities like sports, which they'll also be invited to do, help release my favourite hormone, the love hormone, Christine, oxytocin, and it helps you bond with your teammates. Frank Lampard will know a lot about that. He's got a lot of love hormone. Yeah, absolutely. Loads of oxytocin. <laughs> and so if it works, they will roll it across wider NHS services. So hopefully good for young people. But the answer really is, is to provide better mental health services for young people alongside this. Yeah, very good indeed. Well, I love your dancing and I think you're particularly good. I'm guessing you're anxiety free, Amir, because you're so good at it. <laughs> um, now, Amir, this week we've been talking about our Change and Check campaign, of course, and you've got another very important reminder for all of us. Yes, this is really important. So viewers will be familiar with the Change and Check campaign. It's getting people with breasts to be breast aware. So knowing what's normal for you and if you notice any abnormalities, go and see a healthcare professional. Super, super important, especially with some worrying statistics coming out showing that certain NHS trusts aren't meeting their targets for mammography appointments and for cancer screening appointments as well if, if GPs refer patients uh, in. So it's really important that you know what's normal for you and what isn't. But if you do get that mammography appointment, really, really important, important to attend, uh, even if you've got no symptoms. My mum's breast cancer was picked up through routine mammography. She had no symptoms whatsoever. So really important you attend. But if you have got any symptoms or any changes to your breast that you've noticed, chances are it's 
not cancer, but it's always best to get it checked out. Go and see a healthcare professional who will either be able to reassure you or refer you onwards uh, to the breast services. Yeah, absolutely, Amir. Very good advice. Um, now, we love doing this, debunking a social media trend. We do this well, Amir. What is the latest one? We do, Christine. We are the TikTok police. Inspector Lampard, Inspector Khan reporting for duty. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The latest trend is one of the worst, Christine. So it's called a saltwater flush and it's dissolving two teaspoons of water into a uh, two teaspoons of salt, sorry, into a glass of water, drinking it quickly and then lying down and then going to the loo. And the idea is it's supposed to flush out uh, toxins and, and, and help with bloating. It doesn't do any of that. It's really bad for you. We shouldn't be adding salt to anything, food or drink, because there's plenty of it around. It can affect your bowels, really make you loose and, and make you feel sick. But as well as that, it can increase your blood pressure, increase your heart rate, which is really dangerous, severely dehydrate you. In, and in really serious cases, it can cause coma and death. So, Christine, I think for this one, we're going to be making a lot of arrests for anyone promoting the saltwater flush. OK, they are out of here, straight to prison. Out. OK, Amir, you're <laughs> clearly indoors. We, you know, the weather's changing. It's not, it's a bit miserable out there for a lot of us. Um, but we know you have a beautiful garden. We've seen you spend a lot of time out there. And um, we are very lucky. We have Alan Titchmarsh on the show today. He's here in the actual studio. It's lovely to have him here. And I know you have a question for Alan. Off you go, Amir. Morning, Alan. First Morning. of all, I've got to say I'm a big, big fan. So this is a big deal to me uh, talking to you. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Secondly, <very kind. laughs> Secondly um, I have got a, a big passion flower plant creeping up my house, which I love. The flowers are, are beautiful, as you can see. And it's just um, born fruit for the first time in, a, in, in, in its life, really. These are, I've just picked one off this morning. And I want to know, are they edible? Uh, the, the reason it's born fruit is it's been a lovely warm summer and passionflower really likes sunshine. It's had a great summer for that, which is why the fruit has set and, and swollen like that. Um, it's not the passion fruit you get in the shop, which is a different uh, species called Passiflora edulis. Um, it is edible, but it's very pippy. So try a little bit with a teaspoon if you like, but it's not the culinary one if you like. So, but yeah, that's the reason why it's done it. And they're very decorative, two lovely bright orange fruits. Thank you so much, and such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank and you. you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amir. He's positively giddy this morning, Ali. He's very excited this morning, Amir. <laughs> Look, he's trying to play it cool now. Anyway, thanks so much, Dr. Amir. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye -bye.